This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. Now, there are so many layers to what the cross is about. Uh, yes, it was condemnation of Satan and the work of sin. And yes, it was punishment of death for sin. And yes, it was the bridge to restore man to an eternal relationship with God. But the motivation behind the cross, and that's what we really need to key in on, the motivation behind the cross was God's love for you individually. Now, we can talk about how God loves us, and He loves the church, and He loves His people, and that's all true. But what I want you to really focus in on is how the fact, the fact that God loved you as the individual that you are. He loved you so much. He, he, you were this individual that He desired to have a relationship. So God uh, meticulously designed, first of all, He designed you, He meticulously designed you um, to accomplish His goals and His destiny, and He paid this horrible price for sin in such a way that He could restore you to a relationship with Himself. So the cross was God's way of saying, I love you so much, I can't stand the idea of spending eternity without you. God spoke through the cross to you as an individual. See, if you die separated from God because of your sin, you'll spend eternity separated from God. And that's what the Bible teaches. So God, knowing that he had, to, he had control over death, God knew He had control over death, He paid that price of the sinful death. Now, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21, For our sake He made Him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. Now, I want you to just concentrate on that verse just for a little bit. Do you see the power of the cross in this verse? Look at this. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin and died on it. Do you see what that the verse is saying that? He became sin. We often say that He just bore the sin on, on Himself. Well, that's true. There's certain truth. But this verse says that He became, He made Him to be sin. When Jesus hung on the cross... He became the sin of adultery. He became the sin of drunkenness. He became the sin of murder. He became sin so that your sin would be paid for and so that you don't have to die separated from God for eternity. So your sin, Jesus became your sin on the cross. That's what this verse is saying. Now, the reason that happened was because God loves you so much He can't stand the idea of spending eternity without you. Why did He do it? Well, 1 John 4, verses 9 and 10 says this, In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world, that we might live through Him. His love was made manifest so that we might live through Him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation, that means the payment, for our sin. Now, God meticulously planned the cross for you, individually, for us as a group, but certainly for you as an individual. And when we see how carefully and detailed Jesus' death on the cross was, we discover that this very act of love was on God's mind before you even existed. Before you even existed, God had already planned this for you. God planned for you before you ever came to be. The principle is so clear in a number of places in the Scripture. For one thing, we can, we can draw from what something that God said to uh, Jeremiah, Jeremiah 1.5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. God knew you before you came to be and planned for you. You were taught, we're taught the same thing in Psalm 139. Your eyes saw my unformed substance. In your book were written every one of them, the days that were formed for me, when as yet there was none of them. Before I came to be, that's what he's saying, before I came to be, you wrote me down in your book. You saw me, you planned for me, you had a purpose and a plan, a goal for my life. How, I love verse 17, how precious to me are your thoughts. Would you change a word, the word to, and change it to about, because that actually fits better. How precious about me are your thoughts. Oh God, how vast is the sum of them. Now, if God knew you before you were even born, and God has a goal and a destiny, destiny for your days, um, and as verse 17, God thinks about you all the time, when you understand how important the cross was to God, 
you'll begin to see how important you are to him. So for the rest of this lesson, I want to go through only 18 of the hundreds of prophecies related to the life of Christ, 18 Old Testament prophecies that kind of give us an overview of how much the cross was on God's mind. And remember, as we study this, that the reason the cross was so much on God's mind was because you were on his mind. The cross, the whole purpose of the cross is you. That's, and that's what we really need to get a focus on today. The whole purpose of the cross was you as an individual. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.